All right, everybody. My name is Coach Guess. I'm a super coach here with Play Versus, and I wanted to walk through the lobby creation process. So once you log into the game, my recommendation is to have a captain of each squad do this. However, you as a coach should also be familiar with this to help them troubleshoot. So you know, come over here to the play tab, and then normally this is where they go to play the most common modes of the game. They're going to come to the top right, click on Custom Games, and it'll take you to a blank slate like this. Most players play this on their uh, on some downtime between maps while they're waiting for a match, but we're going to come up here to Create, and this creates a completely custom version of the game that no one that you can control and you can set the the parameters for. We're going to come up here to Settings. Before we start inviting people and doing everything like that, we're going to come over here to Presets. The first one you want to click on under standard presets is competitive. This uh, sets all of the map modes to the competitive standards, which changes how escort and hybrid are played, but you'll need to click on that. Um, likewise, you can also uh, control your settings and things like that as far as who can get in. Um, now, next you're going to want to come to the lobby. This can stay on, this can stay on. Um, for your team, don't mess with the players in the game. These are the folks who will be playing the game. You can go to spectators. Some teams uh, have a coach that wants to spectate or to have their their bench players spectate. This makes substituting a lot easier, but some coaches don't want spectators. So if they want no spectators, you can set it to zero, but you can have up to 12 spectators watching, whether it be um, someone at home on a stream machine or a coach on each side or subs, things like that. You can control that based on what the coaches agree to. Um, and then, likewise, you can control who can get in. This this defaults just fine. Um, personally, I prefer to have the pause on disconnect. That way, you don't have to yell at someone who's still in the game. Hey, hey, I DC'd. It'll just automatically pause for you. Next, you can come up here to the maps. This gives you access to every single map um, in the competitive pool in Overwatch 2. To start the game, you're going to click on None. If you are the home team, you get to pick the first control map. Controls right up here at the top. You can pick any of the control maps except for Busan. Um, so far, I have not received any direction from Play Versus about Li Zhang Lunar New Year, but I've had teams that want to play it, and I like playing fun maps, and so we've played on that a couple times. Tactically, the map is exactly the same, it's just the extra bells and whistles for fun. Um, so let's say we're going to play Ilios. You'll click and turn that on. And if you go back to the lobby, oh, back to the lobby, it'll show you that you're going to play a game of Ilios. Um, next, you'll need to come here to empty and invite your teammates. There are a couple options for this. If you double click on it, it'll pull up your friends that are online and you can invite that way. Or if you press your O social key and you go there's a fifth tab over here that I, I don't have here, but if you are in a lab setting, such as a computer lab at school where, where teams should be playing, it'll have a nearby players option where you can click on that and then go down and find nearby players and invite them. So even if you haven't added your teammates as friends yet, you can do it that way. Last but not least, you can come to click, invite via battle tag, and then type in your friend's battle tag. You will also need this to add the opponent. When you log into Play Versus, it'll show you the roster of your of your opponent for the day. The first player listed should be the team captain, and you'll type in their battle tag. Opposing team captain, and then they've got some numbers, one, two, three, four. And then you would click invite, and you can even set it to, I want them to join team two, because they're on the other team. And it'll pull them in, and then they can in turn invite their teammates. So you don't have to do that for every single person. Um, a word about spectators. So I want to swap to spectators. Right now with no color, I can spectate the whole match. However, a lot of coaches, if they allow spectators, they only want you spectating one, oh, whoops. They only want you spectating one team. So you can come down to spectate blue only or spectate red only. Or if it was a mistake, you want to have everyone in, that'll work too. But let's say I'm playing on the blue team and I've got all my teammates here. Um, when you get to map three, 
there is an option to attack first or defend first. The team that won, oh, sorry, the team that lost push round uh, the, the second game, they get to pick the map. And regardless of what map they pick, the team that won map two gets to pick whether to attack or defend first. When you set up your lobby with what is now team one and team two, the blue team on the left will always defend first. Um, many teams like to do that for various strategic reasons that I might get into a different video, but the left side attack, the left side defends, the right side at attacks, and then in the competitive mode, after you finish a round, you switch and you do it again. And then the team with the better progress wins. Um, so if you need to, oh, I can't, I don't have enough people on my team, but when you have more people on the team, there will be a button up here across the top that says swap and swap all. So you can just click on one team whoop, and click swap all and it'll turn them all over to the red side and all the reds over to the blues so you can attack first or defend first. Um, and then one last thing, looking in here in settings, um, when you go to maps, af after you uh, pick a map, so I decided Ilios, let's say we won Ilios, the other team picks it, I need to come back and turn none of them, uh, so all the maps are off, and then they'll give me a map for push. Push is all the way down here at the bottom, there are three options for push, they want to play Esperanza, turn it on, and here we go, Esperanza, great. Now here's where one of the most frequent things that I run into with uh, lobby management. After map two, now we're on to Escort, and, um, and they pick, I can't think of an Escort map that's not in the pool. Or, or, or let's say on Hybrid, they pick Eichenwalde. I love Eichenwalde, but it's not in the map pool. If you go to Play Versus, and you search for the Overwatch 2 rulebook, it'll tell you what maps are in. So, for example, we're not playing Busan at all. Um, there are several other maps. Route 66 is not in at all. So, if and actually that happened to us the first week of preseason. Our opponent asked for Route 66, and I had to break their hearts and say, it's not in the map pool. Um, I have my opinions about the map pool, but it is what it is. And so make sure that you're picking maps that are within the pool. Um, I, oh, uh, I know Shambhali Monastery is in the pool. There we go. So I hope this helps you with your lobby creation, with the invite process. Getting this flowing really well is really important to getting just a good match for everyone, regardless of what the of what the outcome is. Um, there are times and places where lobby management alone can start creating toxicity and apathy and frustration before the game itself even gets played. So coaches, I would definitely take a look at this and make sure that you and whoever is managing the lobbies when you're the home team understand how to run a lobby. I hope this is helpful and good luck in your matches and your future lobby creations. Peace.